this time. Let's welcome Sister Ruth Heflin. I've got some of the most wonderful news to tell you. I'm glad the Holy Ghost just reminded me because Sister Ann Brooks was here today and she had just heard on the news. You know, we've been so busy at camp meeting, we haven't heard the news. And uh, she had just heard on the news that because there's a new law coming up in uh, Russia concerning the fact that they're, they, they're going to handle the, the release of Soviet Jews in a different way, and they're going to have to get passports, and they're going to have to do uh, a little more detail in order to come out of the country to Israel. And so suddenly, all of the Jewish people got very concerned about it, uh, and all of the agencies in Israel, you know, God keeps telling us, while you're here, I'm working. And we don't know what he's doing. But uh, I heard that for the last week, every half hour, a plane load has been flying out of Russia to Israel. Isn't that tremendous? Every half hour. I, I was so excited when I heard about it, I couldn't believe it, that every half hour of the day, they're going to have a, an airlift just as great as that Entebbe airlift. I must get on the phone to Israel, to a few friends of mine, and try to find out the inside scoop on all that. But uh, I, I was so excited today. I thought, my, no wonder the Lord keeps saying the coming of the Lord is near. Amen. When you begin to see these things happen, and we have a Falasha Jew, an Ethiopian Jew with us in the meeting. Is he here tonight? Is brother here tonight? Come on up. They've never seen an Ethiopian Jew before. When I saw him today, I was so blessed. Now, you know, you folks know I'm partial to Ethiopia anyway, but uh, he's got a, he, come on up here. I just want them to see you. He's got a gentleness of spirit, and I saw him go and greet another Ethiopian, and he was doing it with such manners and beauty. Amen. We are so happy that you are here. You want to just say a word, or you? Uh, I have a little bit difficult to speak English language. Uh, I just am glad I'm here, and uh, a Jewish, Ethiopian Jewish, uh, we don't believe uh, Jesus Christ, but this is uh, my first time, I mean, I don't know what to say. Uh, I accept, yeah, I accept Jesus Christ, yeah. Uh, I used to have a difficult life, and I used to have uh, different problem, and I'm set free from that problem. I used to take a lot, a lot of kind of medications, a psychiatric problem, and I stopped taking medication now. Amen. And <laughs> Hallelujah. And I, I'm saved. And thank you very much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You folks, be, be sure to come up and get a chance to just touch him. Because, you know, we believed for so many years for the Ethiopian Jews to come out of Ethiopia. And, and to begin with, we used to call them Falasha Jews. I only mentioned that so you would know who we were talking about. But then we learned that that was a negative term and that they don't like that term. It sort of means uh, it doesn't have the best meaning. And so we call them Ethiopian Jews. But we prayed for so many years and now God has brought almost all of them up to Israel and brought them out of the, out of the nation of Ethiopia. And now we can just reach out and touch an Ethiopian Jew that has come out. Hallelujah. It's touching miracles. Amen. There's something exciting about touching miracles. Amen. Hallelujah. And I asked him today, I said, are you going to come over to Israel he said, yes. He says, that's my desire in the future. I'm going to come on over and be blessed of the Lord there. God bless you, Tanesta Lane. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Isn't it wonderful? Miracles in front of our eyes. I mean, after all, God's working so quickly that we can hardly believe that it was only uh, six weeks ago 
less than that, uh, that God began to bring them out. This is July the 4th. It was the end, uh, end, of, uh, end of May. And if you don't have, if you didn't hear me preach on that, I preached on it Saturday night a week ago. And uh, I believe it was Saturday night a week ago. And it will be a great blessing to you to hear some of the details uh, of the miracle. Isn't it wonderful to be living in these days uh, of the miraculous? Well, I, I promised... First, I want to say how much we appreciate your generosity and your offerings. And uh, as soon as uh, Sister, Sister Weideman, who's the treasurer of the church and the camp, as soon as she gave me the check for last week's preaching, I called Jerusalem and they wrote a check. And I mean, that's already spent, folks. <laughs> Hallelujah. Your money is already being used for God in Israel. And I want to say thank you because it's a blessing to us all. Uh, I promised someone that we would do the flutter of their wings. There's this lady here tonight that's been asking me. I hope she didn't go home. Amen. Is that the sister that keeps saying, sing the flutter of their wings? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, if she's not here, we'll flutter anyway. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I can feel the flutter, flutter, flutter of their wings. The living creatures in the wheel as they sing. Holy, holy, holy to our God, which was and is and is to come. I can feel the flutter, flutter, flutter of their wings. I can feel the flutter, flutter, flutter of their wings that proclaims the soon coming of our King as the angels hover near Jesus Christ will soon appear I can feel the flutter, flutter, flutter of their wings get that preacher fluttering, amen I can feel the flutter, flutter, flutter of their wings As they cry, holy, holy, holy to our King So I fell on my face For the glory in this place Makes me feel the flutter, flutter, flutter of their wings once more oh i can feel the flutter 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 of their wings the living creatures in the wheel as they sing with both hands brother chan holy 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 to our god which was and is and is to come I can feel the flutter, flutter, flutter of their wings. I can feel the flutter, flutter, flutter of their... Come on, Brother Shore, hallelujah. That proclaims the soon coming of the... The angels hover near Jesus Christ. Will soon appear. I can feel the flutter, flutter, flutter of their wings. Oh, I can feel the flutter, flutter, flutter of their wings. As they cry, holy, holy, holy to our King. So Makes me feel the flutter, flutter, flutter of their wings. Hallelujah, the flutter of their wings, the flutter of their wings. Hallelujah. <laughs> Oh, 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm reading tonight uh, from Ezekiel, <clears throat> Ezekiel chapter 37. <clears throat> There's such a beautiful flow of the Spirit here. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He could Oh, bless the Lord. Ezekiel 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open, in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and I will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came unto them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Hallelujah, hallelujah, that phrase. So I prophesied as I was commanded has been just going over in my spirit all day long. Amen. Thank God that God gives us with a message and tells us where to deliver it and all we have to do is be obedient and he does the rest. Amen. I believe that we are going to see this this uh, great revival come in as men and women learn how to prophesy where God tells them to. Now that doesn't mean that we're only going to lay our hands on the heads of people and prophesy. But I believe that just as Ezekiel had an experience in God in which he was taken to the most unlikely place in the world. How would you like to begin your ministry in a cemetery? Amen. We would be still hearing the complaints. I'm resigning because I don't like my commission. Amen. Let them choose somebody else. This isn't what I was raised for. It's not what I was brought into the world for. It's not using my talents and my abilities and, my, and the things that God has entrusted to me. I mean, after all, doesn't everybody know my worth and hear God? God is sending me, amen, to a, 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 a cemetery, a valley full of dry bones. Not only were they dry, they were exceedingly dry. They had been dead a long, long time. Hallelujah. 
they had just been dead a little while, there had been moisture. Amen. Sometimes when something is dead a short time, we have faith to believe for it. I mean, it's not sort of petrified and ossified and solidified and everything else. We have faith to believe, but sometimes when we see situations that look like death and we begin to wonder, how can God work in this situation? There are many people that have given up on America, but I haven't. Oh, hallelujah. If Ezekiel can prophesy to the dead, I can. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Oh, bless the Lord. I hear people give up on their churches. I don't believe there's any such thing as a dead church because I believe that in every body of believers there is some life. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. People that give up on their churches, on their situations. God just wants somebody that can see it like he sees it. Amen. Hallelujah. That in seeing it like he sees it can believe for it and can prophesy into the situation. You know what we tend to do is that we murmur and complain Complain about the situation rather than prophesying into it. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, well, I didn't know I could prophesy into situations. Yes, you can. Hallelujah. You can prophesy into situations and change them in the name of the Lord by that prophetic release. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You might find that you have to do like Ezekiel did. Ezekiel not only prophesied once, but he prophesied twice. Hallelujah. He said the first prophecy, he began to say, see the, the, the coming together. There was a coming together of the, of the bones. There was a coming together. He could hear the noise as they were coming together. As sinews were being placed upon them. God was working. He was responding to that prophetic voice of a man of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But he had to prophesy a second time until the completed work that God desired to do in, in this boneyard took place. Hallelujah. And sometimes we give up too easily on people. We give up too easily on churches. We give up too easily. Hallelujah. But if somebody could pray you in and we tend to forget how difficult we were. Amen. Hallelujah. If somebody can prophesy and you find your life changed and transformed by that prophetic flow of God then God gives you an authority and an ability and an anointing to go forth and prophesy and that very prophetic word becomes the creative force of God working in the lives of individual not at a date after you leave but he says again and again here and as I prophesy <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah you say well you know I remember once years ago I was invited to a foreign country and I flew into this particular foreign country and they knew that I had a prophetic ministry but the young people in the family that were ministers they began to at the dinner table tell all kinds of jokes about people prophesying I wasn't raised to handle the things of God lightly. Joke about politics. Joke about the economy. Joke about anything else in life. And I like a good joke, but don't joke about the things of God. Because they'll say, well, they just prophesied into the air. Well, so did Ezekiel. Hallelujah. So did Ezekiel. Hallelujah. Ezekiel prophesied to the winds. He prophesied to the direction, to the north, the south, the east, and the west, that the Spirit of God would come from the four corners of the earth and enter into these bones. Hallelujah. That they would rise up and become a mighty army. Hallelujah. In Hebrew... 
The word wind is the same word as the word spirit. And so when he was prophesying, he was not prophesying to wind. He was prophesying to spirit. Hallelujah. Can you prophesy to spirit? Yes, you can. Hallelujah. You can prophesy that the spirit of God will come. Hallelujah. As he did from the four corners of the earth and breathe upon these who have been formed but yet not come alive that they will live. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe this. I believe we're just at this point uh, that we need to start prophesying for the Spirit of God to breathe into the lives of individuals. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, instead of looking at them and wringing your hands, look at them, get in the Spirit and prophesy change and transformation. You don't have to do it in their presence. Amen. Hallelujah. You can prophesy it into their being without them, without laying hands upon them. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ezekiel prophesied to these old dead bones. Amen. And as he was prophesying, praise the Lord, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O oh, ye dry bones, Hear the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones. I will cause breath to enter into you and ye shall live. I will lay sinews upon you and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin. Hallelujah. And put breath in you and ye shall live and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Ha <laughs> ha. Hallelujah. You say, Sister Ruth, it sounds radical. Well, it's time that we begin to realize, uh, hallelujah, that those prophets, none of them were normal people after the, after the understanding of the flesh. They were all radicals. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you link yourself up uh, with that creative force uh, of the Spirit of God and the Word of God flowing uh, out of your mouth, uh, you will prophesy uh, and it will be words that you have not considered uh, but you will not be hallelujah you'll become the spokesperson for God and not prophesy according to your own reasoning amen many a person in beginning stages of prophecies have stopped short when God was speaking because they didn't have faith to believe what God was saying amen we've looked at people and God said I'm going to use you to bless and the Lord wanted the word multitudes, and we looked at them and we thought, how could they possibly ever bless the multitudes? And we've minimized it and said, people. Amen. But God wants a people, hallelujah, that have an anointing. And in this last day revival, we're going to find that the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. And as the spirit of prophecy works in us and through us, we are going to prophesy, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to prophesy and see it come to pass hallelujah oh bless the Lord prophesy as I have commanded you and he says so I prophesied as I was commanded it was just that simple I did it just as God said and as I was prophesying there came a noise hallelujah there was a shaking together oh hallelujah these things began to happen hallelujah as I prophesied there was a noise and a shaking and the bones came together bone to his bone and when I beheld Lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but still there was no breath 
in them already hallelujah the bone came to his bone and the sinews came together and already flesh was there and there was formed a man he was a total man but he just didn't have the breath of life I believe that we already across our great nation we have a man that has been formed but he needs that breath of God breathed in him. Hallelujah. Go back to your hometowns and prophesy the breath of God coming into people and individuals and churches and situations there. Let God use your voice. Now there's something wonderful about the voice. I believe that the voice is the greatest instrument of harvest. I believe that the voice is the greatest instrument of praise and worship. I believe that the voice is the greatest instrument of spiritual warfare. I, I, we could go on what I believe the voice is. And God is causing a people that can learn how to lift up their voice and declare it. You say, well, I'm afraid to. Go ahead and open your mouth. Hallelujah. Open your mouth wide and I will Fill it. Hallelujah. And some people would say, oh yes, you'll fill it with wind. Oh no, not wind. Ruach. The Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The same word. He's not going to fill it with wind. He's going to fill it with His Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That prophetic anointing. There are folks here that need to go back in your church. Pastors that need to not let a church service go by. That you don't yield to the Holy Spirit. And let that prophetic voice voice come forth you're going to see the enlargement by the prophetic voice amen you're going to see the increase by the prophetic voice you're going to see great transformations taking place in lives of people by that prophetic voice hallelujah prophesying as you are commanded I don't know why it is that we have problems with prophecy when we don't have problems with speaking in other tongues. Amen? I mean, you would think anybody that can speak in tongues would be able or willing to yield their mouths to the Holy Spirit to speak in their own language. This brother that came tonight, he doesn't speak English. Sister Marguerite went back from Israel. God gave me a word for her when she was in Jerusalem a few months ago and I, about coming to be with us in camp meeting. She went back and told this brother and he's flown all the way from France to be here not speaking a word of English, just having Sister Marguerite to help him, amen, to understand what God's saying and doing in the service but when the spirit of God moved upon him he opened his mouth and began to prophesy and God used her to help us interpret it into English amen hallelujah but he prophesied as he was commanded hallelujah hallelujah there is a commandment of God that's upon us to prophesy Amen. Hallelujah. You can't come into a church service. And if God gives you a prophetic word, just hold it and say, well, I thought maybe another time would be better. That's not your prerogative. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If God gives you a prophetic word, oh, hallelujah. Prophesy as you're commanded. Oh, praise the Lord. Let that prophetic voice begin to be uh, heard. The voice of the Spirit that's calling unto those throughout the world. God using your voice. Now, prophecy is not just in the midst of the congregation. 
prophecy as we've already have seen is out in the marketplace. And you don't stand up and just begin to prophesy maybe like you would do it in the church service. I remember years ago when Eastern Europe was so totally closed and if a person were to, to uh, uh, prophesy in a service in Eastern Europe, it would get everybody in trouble. And, I, and Sister Susan went to one of the Eastern European countries and God gave the pass, uh, her a word for the pastor and she just went up to shake hands with him and with her eyes wide open as if she were talking, as if there was no difference in what she was saying and greeting, she prophesied life into his spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We have an ability to prophesy life in to people. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you begin to take this authority in the Holy Spirit, oh, Kariam, it's not if you're called a prophet. It's whether you're working and prophesying. Amen. Sometimes we're more concerned about titles than the doing of it. But God wants a people. And I believe, that as, as Paul said, everyone may prophesy. Amen. We all may prophesy. Sometimes we set certain gifts so high on a pedestal that they're none functioning. God did not intend them to be something that was ornamental. He wants it to be that which is functioning and utilitarian in your life. He's using you as, a, as an instrument, as the voice of God. Praise the Lord. He wants to use you and use your voice to speak life. Hallelujah. We have an authority. I remember in 72, our family, my brother called long distance to Israel and rented the big government conference center, the Binyane Halma. He rented it over the telephone without seeing it. And it's a, a large, it's our largest auditorium, seats about, uh, I don't know, about three and a half thousand people. And we went over there by the word of the Lord, hallelujah, to have a conference. 1972 was very early. Most people didn't start having conferences really until in the 80s. And uh, we had this conference. And I remember when Israel Television came and, and to interview us. And I just looked into the camera and I began to prophesy Ezekiel 37. Hallelujah. I prophesied life coming into the land of Israel, a quickening that divine life of God coming in. Hallelujah. You said, can you, can you just do that? Yes. Amen. We don't have to be too religious. We can speak with an authority. Hallelujah. And our word begins to cause it to happen as we are prophesying suddenly that life begins to break forth hallelujah hallelujah praise the Lord oh bless the Lord I remember one sister Susan was invited down she went down to Benin City in Nigeria and uh this particular service was her first service and they gave her, <clears throat> there was another speaker, but they gave her, I think, two or three minutes to say something. What does one say in two or three minutes? So she decided God had sent her and she was going to prophesy. And she began to prophesy into that meeting and the Spirit of God came down upon it and suddenly she became the main evening speaker. Hallelujah. She had prophesied a life into that service. Hallelujah. That life-giving flow of the Spirit of God. That life is within us. And we have an authority to impart it and speak it into those situations that are dead. Hallelujah. That they become alive. Oh, bless the Lord. I've been blessed because God has sent me to prophesy to a number of leaders of the world. 
And we have seen that word come to pass. Emperor Haile Selassie said to me once, he said, Ruth, any time God gives you a word for any world leader, don't hesitate to go. I thought that was probably one of the, the best uh, affidavits of the ministry of approval uh, because he said, don't hesitate uh, to take the message. People are waiting to hear what God has to say. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. One of the things that I learned from the Episcopalians, now this was back uh, in the... Uh, uh, initial outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the 50s and 60s. You know, we Pentecostals only would prophesy. Well, I had grown up with, with prophecy. I, I was accustomed to prophecy in the church. But uh, we would only prophesy in the church. But those Episcopalians, they would prophesy anywhere. I mean, roof garden, restaurants, and uh, ballrooms of, of hotels, not just where they were having their own meeting, but in other situations. They stood up and said a prophetic word. Hallelujah. And this whole charismatic renewal has come in because of that voice of prophecy that was released through Episcopalians that had a daring to go into places that nobody else would go. And they prophesied as the Lord commanded them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. One of the stories I tell in my book was concerning having come, I just returned back to Jerusalem from Australia. And when I got home, I thought, well, I'd be there at least, uh, uh, you know, uh, maybe a month, and then I'd come on over to camp meeting. And I had been only home a few days when one of the sisters had a vision, one of our Indian sisters. She saw a line going from Jerusalem across to West Africa, down from West Africa to uh, the middle of South America, and then coming up along the coastline of South America to Virginia. Now that's all she saw. But as she told what she saw, I understood what God was saying because I followed along in vision as she told it. And I knew that God wanted me that the central part of that northern part of Africa was Sierra Leone. And then that part of down in South, South America, I knew that was Rio de Janeiro. And so I called some of our friends in Sierra Leone and I said, could you use me in Sierra Leone for a week? They said, yes, they'd be very happy for me to come. I made no stipulation. I just flew in and got the red carpet treatment, literally they had a red carpet all the way out to the, to the airplane with the government officials and everyone there ready to receive me. They'd rented the town hall. I, 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 I had left home with the only $100 and by the time I got a shot in Lagos on the way and spent the night, I arrived in Sierra, Le in Sierra Leone without a cent of money but nobody knew it. The red carpet treatment, uh, amen, the, the, the town hall which was packed out night after night, uh, the, the tremendous outpouring of the Spirit uh, with government officials, uh, praise the Lord. And then after that, uh, I flew on down to Rio. Now, I didn't know what God had for me in Rio except that I had seen a vision as she was giving this word of this big, tall statue there, the, the statue of Christ that overlooks the harbor of Rio de Janeiro. And the Lord had said, go and prophesy to Rio and to Brazil. So when I got there, I uh, went up to the top of the mountain and the Spirit of the Lord came on me and I began to prophesy to the winds. Amen. Hallelujah. Begin to prophesy to the Spirit uh, to come from the four corners uh, and to breathe upon that land uh, and to change the atmosphere over it. And I was just prophesying along this line and what God was going to do. 
And when I finished prophesying, I, I came on back down the mountain, got ready to leave the next day, and I flew on up the coast of South America, on up the coast of North America, and came to Virginia for camp meeting. I called my friend in Canada, Brother John Lucas, and uh, I, I was telling him, he said, what have you just been doing? I was telling him what I'd just done and how that I'd gone to Rio and prophesied. And he said, well, I, I know why you prophesied. I said, you do? He said, yes, Brother Mars Cirillo is going to have the largest media event supposed to be the fourth largest media event in America in this particular year and he said uh, he said it's going to be on Saturday he's rented 10 stadiums all over Brazil and then they're going to they're going to send it uh, uh, by a, t a satellite and it's going to come back to uh, uh, I think it was 60 or 70 major halls across America and Canada and it was going to be piped in and, he, and this is what Brother Lucas said. He said, initially, Brother Morris Sorello wanted to have the meeting in San Paulo because the spiritual atmosphere in San Paulo was more clear and there were a lot of spirit-filled people. But because of the technical aspect, he had to have it in Rio in order to be able to have this international satellite look, hook up. Uh, and uh, so the Lord just sent somebody all the way from Jerusalem via West Africa into Rio uh, to go up to the top of the mountain and speak to the atmosphere over Rio. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are workers together with God. I hadn't seen Brother Cirillo since I was a child and had nothing in the natural no knowledge of what he was doing but God is concerned enough about the total plan of God he doesn't want you boxed into your own little area he wants to be able to send you to be a part of that great thing that he's doing in all the earth and I heard that uh, from people that were in the some of the stadiums in fact uh, brother one of the folks told me later that they were in a big, uh, I guess Sister Dorn told me that she and her husband were in a big uh, auditorium in, in Detroit and she was knocked off of her seat as she watched this taking place on the on the uh, on the satellite uh, 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 production. She was totally came out of her seat and fell out under the power of God and stayed out under the power of God the whole time. Why? Because there had been someone willing to go in obedience. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, the Lord may have you do something like that's just as strange as going to a valley and prophesying but if you prophesy life <laughs> hallelujah if you prophesy a coming together if you prophesy oh that uh, the God will bring forth a man that will become a great and a mighty army a mighty people we're going to see God doing great things years ago God sent me to the four corners of America sister Susan and I went God told us to go and prophesy in the four corners of America. We didn't know anybody. And just recently, when I was in Seattle, I had dinner with a pastor and his wife that I met back in, I'm not sure, 1974, whatever year it was that we went and prophesied. Uh, I just was with him and his wife when I was there in Seattle. But it's interesting because out of going to those four corners of America and prophesying a release in the spirit, it's interesting how God has given us fruit out of the San Diego area and out of the Seattle area and out of the Florida area and given us fruit up out of that northern New England area. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you go, you may not see the results at the moment. You're only prophesying as you are 
commanded. Hallelujah. But God will always let you see the fruit at some time in your ministry from that which you have done by the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I prophesied as I was commanded. Turn with me to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 18. This is the tremendous portion concerning uh, uh, Jeremiah going down to the potter's house. And he sees the work being done on the wheel. Hallelujah. Notice beginning with verse 5 of Jeremiah 18. Then the word of the Lord came unto me saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. At what instant I shall speak concerning a nation, concerning a kingdom, to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it. If that nation against whom I have pronounced turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. And at what instant I shall speak concerning a nation, concerning a kingdom to build and to plan it. If it do evil in my sight that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good wherewith I said I would, I would benefit them. Now listen, at the very instant that God speaks concerning a nation... It begins to come into being. <laughs> it doesn't take God a long time. He already sets into motion his plans and his purposes. Oh, hallelujah. God wants to lift your sights from a local situation. Now, that doesn't mean that you pastors are not to be faithful with your congregation but stop being so local. Amen. Hallelujah. Stop being so local. Hallelujah. Let God lift you up and give you, let that pulpit should be a pulpit to the world. That pulpit should be a pulpit to the nations. That place of standing and prophesying should be a release to all over the world. You should have a part in the harvest fields of the world by the prophetic voice that's released in your place somebody said to me today they were a little discouraged where they their particular ministry is they said recently there are not a lot of people coming I said well I'm sure you've got as many coming as we have most of the time in Jerusalem these days but I said I tell our people in Jerusalem our ministry is not in those four walls that's just our pulpit Amen. That's just the place that our voice is released from. But this voice goes out. Hallelujah. I love that verse in Psalms that says there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. And my voice can go, hallelujah, to the ends of the earth as I prophesy release standing in Ashland or standing in Jerusalem. This voice of the Spirit has no barriers. Amen. Amen. It goes to the ends of the earth and immediately begins to put into the effect that creative spirit of God. Pastors, don't be concerned if your congregation is limited. You're not limited. And the Spirit's not limited. Hallelujah. And you can begin by vision and, and revelation to prophesy into a into a ministry hallelujah that will bless the nations of the world hallelujah oh pakaria manda you say sister ruth that seems strange listen don't you say there's no distance in prayer amen the very people that have a problem with the prophetic words say there's no distance in prayer. I can pray here and you'll be blessed 10,000 miles away. And yet if I prophesy here, 
Oh, you can't believe somebody's going to be affected. Amen. 10,000 miles away, but they can be. Amen. Hallelujah. And they are being. Oh, hallelujah. That's why the Lord wants that greatness of vision to come into our spirit so that we're not always prophesying in this limited realm, but that God's lifting us up and we are seeing the world as our church. Hallelujah. And the body of Christ as our congregation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I can preach in any church in the world that I want to. Amen. Hallelujah. I can preach in any church in the world that God wants to send me to. Amen. Do you understand? There are no closed doors to God. The Philadelphia church is the church of the open door. Hallelujah. 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 And God wants you to prophesy yourself into victory. Hallelujah. Into a greater anointing and ministry and power. Hallelujah. And to let that enlargement come. The Lord said to Jeremiah, cannot I do with you? Cannot I do with you? Can I do with you? Hallelujah. God can do it. Amen. Hallelujah. God can do it. Hallelujah. And your feet are going to stand in Egypt. And God's going to do. Hallelujah. God's going to use you as the repairer of breaches in that land. Hallelujah. He's going to cause you to flow among peoples. You're not going to flow in just one group. But you're going to flow among peoples there. Because God needs someone to repair breaches. And to stand in the gap. And be those that see peoples come together of different faiths. But those that love Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, bless the Lord. If you'll be non-sectarian. And you'll just love people everywhere. God will send you. Sometimes he doesn't send people because he doesn't want them to divide the body more than it's already divided. Amen. But if we'll get to the place, hallelujah, that we'll see, thank God, that, that uh, Ezekiel was non-selective in prophesying over dead bones. <laughs> he couldn't see them. He couldn't see any labels. He couldn't see any differences. They were just dead bones and he prophesied to all of them to come alive and you better stop being selective and go into situations and prophesy life into everybody. Those that will receive life, let them receive it from the hand of the Lord as the mouth of the anointed. Speak it forth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And our Heavenly Father, I just declare for this people tonight, I declare an opening of the mouth. I declare an anointing, a release for your people to go forth in the name of the Lord. Oh, Shekiel Amundi. Hallelujah. To go forth and prophesy even as they are commanded and to see your works accomplished and fulfilled before their very eyes. Oh, Shekiel Amundi. Oh, Kalamanda. And I prophesy even to the harvest, the laborers in the harvest this night. I prophesy arise up in the name of the Lord arise up and come forward into the white and harvest field arise up and pick up your sickle and begin to reap in the name of the Lord all over the world I declare and decree a rising up of men and women of God anointed to do everything exploits in these last days Hakarabashiando. hallelujah and let everyone say amen 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 hallelujah can we gather here at the front everyone gathering down oh kulamasi hatiki alaborabashi Hallelujah, hallelujah, Brother, Brother Bob. Brother Bob Rowe, 
I just see God's got such changes for you in the future. You think you've got it all mapped out. You're pretty good organizer. You're pretty good at arranging things. But God's going to yet get the best out of your life. And you're not going to use the best for anything else other than God. Hallelujah. There's a call on your life for greatness that is yet to be fulfilled. Hallelujah. Just reach up and receive it. Receive it from the hand of the Lord. This very night, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Oh, Pakashi and I, and I speak life, the abundant life, the abundant flow into everyone here tonight. I prophesy a release of the prophetic flow into your spirit that whereas you've been bound and fearful of man, whereas you've been hesitant and, and not willing to open your mouth, you you're not going to be able to keep it closed. Hallelujah. You're going to flow in a realm of glory, in a realm of the anointing, the power, the glory of God to an extent that you never have before. Hallelujah. 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 And I want to say to the two of you that Baltimore may at times seem like a cemetery, but I tell you, if you folks will go back and just stand in the middle of the city somewhere, and turn to the north and prophesy life and turn to the south and prophesy life and turn to the east and prophesy life and turn to the west and prophesy life God's going to bring forth such life in Baltimore that Baltimore is going to become known across America for the outpouring of the spirit that's among her go home and do it in the name of the Lord hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah, 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 ha <laughs> ha, oh, hallelujah, hashiatai, oh, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, if you're willing to do it, God will do it, amen, hallelujah, if you're willing to prophesy, Brother Chan, just go back to San Francisco and stand in the middle of the city, people have, some have written off San Francisco because of, of the gays there but God's not going to allow San Francisco to go down the drain and we're not going to let it happen amen we're going to join ourselves to the purposes of God and declare a Holy Ghost revival for San Francisco hallelujah we're going to possess cities in the name of the Lord life coming forth a revival among the gay community the gays are not too hard for Jesus Christ the blood of Jesus is efficacious hallelujah for that old sophisticated worldly hard hallelujah society of San Francisco they've laughed at the Bible belt but God's going to bring a revival hallelujah greater than even the Bible belt in sophisticated San Francisco hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Oh, come on, hallelujah, just decree it. Open your mouth and begin to prophesy into cities and places as the Spirit of God moves upon you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, Cassiti my. Oh, Bariando Pakasi. Amen. Amen. Declare it. Decree it. Prophesy it. Speak it forth under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Be the prophet of God in your city. Be the word mouthpiece of God in your town. Be the voice of God in your community. And don't let things continue as they are. But prophesy change in the anointing and power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I prophesy a move of the Holy Ghost among the New Age people across America and across Canada and across the world. Holy Ghost revival among the New Age.
beach people. I declare it in Newburn, North Carolina. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Holy Ghost revival. Hallelujah, I speak life into it. We're not going to walk around situations. We've walked around them long enough, amen. We're not going to skirt and avoid situations. We're going to decree in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Changes in atmospheres over cities. Changes in atmospheres over towns. Changes in atmospheres over, hallelujah, states. Changes in atmosphere across our great nation. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Just continue to decree it. Keep shooting your arrows in the name of the Lord. Oh, Parishi Amanda. Amen. Hallelujah. You've got your, you've got the quiver out with your arrows in it and keep shooting. Just shoot one after another as the Holy Spirit under this anointing impresses you concerning a city or a people or a church or a place. Sometimes in a couple of minutes I go around the world when the anointing comes on me for a release. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah! Just declare it, Hashitia. Handi Aribianda in the name of the Lord. Ha ha. Oh, Hori Amaya. Oh, Baristi Alamaya. Hallelujah, Tilamaya. Handorobobashi. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. And I decree concerning Russia that that door shall not be shut until every one of the Jews that God wants to bring home have come home. That the door shall remain open if there need be a reversal of law. That there shall be a reversal of law if there needs to be a cancellation of law. That there shall be canceled. I decree that the purposes of God are above every Soviet law. The purposes of God are above every law of Russia. I decree it in the name of the Lord that all the Jews shall come home from the north country and return to Zion. That they shall come from all the countries where they have been scattered. That they shall return. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. God's doing great things in all the earth. He's doing greater things than we can comprehend. He's doing things beyond our understanding. He's shaking up nations. He's changing the order of nations. He is bringing to pass His purposes in all the earth. He is setting the stage for revival. Amen. He's setting the stage for the harvest. He's He's setting it, hallelujah, for the end gathering, for the end gathering, for the end gathering, hallelujah, 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 and in Barbados too, hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, and God's got something more for you, amen. God wants you to look up in the realm of the spirit and he wants you to see the stars of the sky. Hallelujah. And he wants you to know that you can have seed like the stars in the heaven if you'll just not let go. Amen. Don't be weary in well-doing. Don't let the trials that have come and dogged at your heel like a little puppy dog nipping at your heel. Don't let those, those little bites distract you. Keep your eye on the heavenly vision. 
Hallelujah. It's in that heavenly vision of the nations that you're going to see your total fulfillment. And honey, you're not going to always have to have to work and provide ways for you to go. God's going to release you in every way so that somebody else is going to send you. Hallelujah. To do what God has for you to do. Hallelujah. You're too valuable to the kingdom of God for to be working on a secular job in any way or to work, amen, and things lesser than those things that are eternal. Hallelujah. God's called you for an eternal calling. Hallelujah. You need to give your full time to it and God's going to make a way for you to do it. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Anybody else that feels touched by the Spirit to latch hold of that, take a hold of it. 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 If you don't have a good world map nearby that you can look at every day, go out tomorrow and buy one. Amen. Have one in a prominent place in your house. Amen. Preferably on the, in the kitchen. You know, we all like to go in the kitchen. Amen. Put it on in the kitchen so you can see the world before your eyes continually that God can enlarge your vision. Hallelujah. Have a world map with you. Hallelujah. Just put it in your Bible. It's good. Hallelujah. I have it written on my heart so I don't carry one with me. But if it's not written in your spirit yet and if it's not written in your heart yet, carry one with you until it is. Amen. Hallelujah. So so that right where you are, you can dance down one continent and up the other. Hallelujah. And possess it in the name of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Get a good map. We, I tell you, these Australians, we have for years danced around Australia, up one coast and down the other, and possessed the interior and the exterior, and possessed the places. And I tell you, Australia has seen great things happen and being accomplished by the Spirit of God and the last chapter hadn't been written yet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's some people, I haven't been to Australia now for two or three years in the flesh, but there's never a week I'm not there in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. They say, why isn't Sister Ruth coming back? Well, as soon as the Lord lets me, I'm going back. But I tell you, in the meantime, I'm not letting go. Amen. It's my inheritance. It's my possession. Hallelujah. I, I have an inheritance there, and I, I pray about it, and I possess it, and I decree it, and I declare it. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Get a tenacity of spirit. Amen. Get a little spiritual greed. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, I'm not, not, not interested in just having one nation. I want to possess the nations for my inheritance and the uttermost part of the earth as my possessions. Hallelujah. I want those little owls of the sea. Hallelujah. Like our sister over in Tonga. Hallelujah. I want those isles. I've walked those streets in Tonga too and possess them in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a vision right now of Washington, D.C., that embassy area of Washington, D.C. Hallelujah. So God wants us to begin to possess it. Hallelujah. Walking up in the spirit up and down Massachusetts Avenue and all of those little in-between avenues. Hallelujah. Possessing a Revival among the nations of the world beginning with the ambassadors uh, hallelujah and the consular officials and those in high office uh, hallelujah hallelujah ask of the Lord tonight uh, and begin to prophesy it and speak it uh, into existence he she hallelujah let's just speak in tongues a few minutes uh, Oh, Ribiando, Esti Alamando, Hiki Alamando, Hashi Alamandaya, Esti Alaborisia Maya. 
Hakaribiando Timbia Haya Hashia Tataya Hallelujah 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 Haha Oh Shiaranda Yatiki Alamaya Oh Hallelujah I ask
celebrating her birth. She was birthed to bless the nations. And we bless America this day and decree that she shall be used of God to bless the nations of the world with holy ghost revival that America's finances shall send missionaries forth that the anointing that's in America you shall be used of God to be scattered and dispersed abroad I pray for President Bush I'm seeing even now two angels of the Lord one on either side of him hallelujah hallelujah strengthen him Lord and be unto him wisdom and knowledge and understanding oh drop your mind into his mind drop your will into his will oh hallelujah 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 in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus just say it with me in the name of Jesus Hallelujah.